because we need not to be becoming. Amen. Amen. Because when we get there, the thing is, I want some money. Amen. And if your guest is coming back to the guest, we're going to need that money too. But we're going to pay for you. So, so, so thank you in advance for doing what you going to do. Amen. 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 We have any first time guests, please stand. Any first time guests? Any first time guests? I'm not going to ask you anything. I'm going to just stand. I want to recognize you. Any of your first time here, you please just stand up for a second and, and let us recognize you. That's, that's, well, I thought I had them saying something. All right, we have a non-first time guest. Anyone who's here, is that your first time here? Because you're not a member of Word Deliverance yet, you please stand. Again, I just want to recognize you. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So much we all go stand with you now. Come on, everybody, let's stand. Turn our Bibles to John chapter number eight. We'll look at a few verses, starting at verse number 30. Turn at verse number 30, John chapter number eight, starting at verse number 30. Um, down through verse 32. If you just want to have a Bible, please share the word, your Bible with them. So everyone can follow along. The verse is written up here on the on the screen. Um, but it's nothing like seeing it for yourself in your own Bible, whether your Bible is on our free app, which our free app is awesome app, you all. It's awesome app, and, and the app is steadily being enhanced. Um, so I encourage you to download on the, on the app store, iTunes store, or through Google Play, uh, the World Deliverance Christian app. It is, everybody say free. Free. It's free to download, um, but it's a dynamic app, amen. John chapter number eight, and the Bible is on that app also. John chapter number eight, starting in verse number 30. We see that. Can we say amen? Amen. Amen. Starting at verse 30, reads as follows. And he, as he spake these words, he ain't talking about Jesus. Okay? Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. As he, talking about Jesus, spake these words, many believed on him. Talking about Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. God's word is already blessed, Amen. and so are we. I want to speak today, you all, and to close out our series, the series he's able, I want to speak from this thought, you all, set the atmosphere. All right. Amen. Amen. Set the atmosphere. You have seen it in the presence of the Lord. God. We're going to believe God, his word is going to help somebody say set the atmosphere his word is going to help set the atmosphere it is our prayer on this day you all that all of us are blessed that the unsaved and according to the word of God uh, the unsaved is anyone who's not yet confessed over Jesus Christ anyone who's not yet a born again baptized believer they fall under the category Eric what the Bible defines as one who is unsaved and all of us know someone who needs to accept Christ as their Savior. It is our prayer that as we share with God's Word today, you all, that we allow the Word of God to help us seriously have an atmosphere where people want to accept Jesus. What are we doing? Same what I asked, said earlier, I asked another group, you all, because we don't lie, and I ain't going to go into that detail. But same what I asked earlier, Landon Turner, what are we doing if we're not helping people accept Christ? All right, all right. All right. We have to, you all, be willing to set the atmosphere, Juwan, where people would want to come to know Jesus as their Lord and as their, I say, Savior, Savior. And as their Savior. Because I promise you there's nobody like him. Amen. There's no one like him anywhere at all. It is my prayer today that saints, Christians, those of us who are born again, baptized, believers, those of us who have confessed, Hope of Jesus Christ, that as we share from God's word on this day, you all, that we as Christians, as saints, would come to a point and place where we would allow the word of God to help us have an atmosphere, you all, where we not only listen to the word, and we not only learn the word, but we commit ourselves to living the word. Because as we live the word, Pearl, we will see where God will allow us to achieve and accomplish everything he's predestined us to achieve right, and accomplish right. and the atmosphere around us will be such where other people can become better also right, right. i get no help i'm saying it again makita when we live his word we create an atmosphere around us where not only can we achieve and accomplish
achieving that which God wants us to achieve and accomplish. But when do we help other people around us become somebody say better? We help people around us become better also. Watch this. A few weeks ago, Sarisha, I'm standing right out there having a conversation with one of the female members of our church. I can't quite remember who it was. When I say this, she probably know who it was. But I said, all right, to have a conversation with one of the female members of our church when another woman of the church you want to find a rush by us. I spoke to this woman, you all, and she turned for the third look while she was walking backwards and she said, Pastor, how are you? I'm not trying to be rude. I need to go outside and cool off because I'm having a moment right now. <laughs> now, when I said that, the person said that knew who it was. And I ain't going to say who it was unless she let everybody know who it was. I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to look at it either. Anyway, but she was having a moment. And in one hand, she had a towel. Other hand, she had a sheet of paper and a face was full of sweat. And I looked, I said, carry on, carry on, carry on. And she turned and she was fanning, walking, and wiping. That sweat was coming down her face. I turned around to the person whom I was talking to a moment ago, Nalisha, and looked back at her to finish the conversation. And this woman, Cora, decided to try to explain to me what just happened. <laughs> so Tina, she looked at me and she said, well, see, when she said she's having a moment, that means she's having a personal summer. <laughs> when she said she's having a moment, that means she's flashing right now. <laughs> and, 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 and what I wanted to do, see, what I wanted to do with that, honestly, what I wanted to do, I wanted to stop the woman who was telling me, oh, let's give her a hug and say, baby, just keep that to yourself, because honestly, you preach it to the choir. <laughs> you don't need to explain to me what that means, because I live it. I know for a fact what that means. <laughs> my wife and I, you are, my wife and I frequently have very serious discussions about the heat in our house. Especially murders during the winter months. Oh, we have very serious discussions. When I say frequently, I'm mean like every day. Every day, we have a serious discussion about the heat in our house. Now watch this. And, and every day, every day that we have the same conversation that sounds like a question, but it's really a statement. Now I need the married man in here who you have not gone through this yet, take notes from me, please. <laughs> so that when you experience it, you can pass the test. So my wife starts off like this. Here's how it starts. It starts off with saying, I'm hot. <laughs> Either she will say, I'm hot or it's hot. Either way, the next part is always the same. I'm hot. Thomas, did you turn the heat up? It's hot. <laughs> now, to the untrained ear, it sounds like a question. Yes, yes. Just this, Thomas, did you turn the heat up? But it's not a question. It's a statement. And the reason I know, Patricia, is a statement of the question because my silly self tries to answer the question only for to come back and tell me I'm not telling the truth. <laughs> so here's how it goes. It's hot. Thomas, did you turn the heat up? It's hot. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> well, I thought you just asked me a question. <laughs> but clearly, I was mistaken. It wasn't the question you were telling me I turned the heat up. Now, now, honestly, because I don't like being cold, so my wife does, though, it is she asks to turn the heat down. By, by turn the heat down, what she really means, Josephine Kellen, is turn the heat off. I, 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 I like to keep it on a nice 68, 70, and, and, and when it gets chilly, the furnace has to kick on to keep it at that temperature. But as soon as her bionic ears hear the temperature and hear the furnace come on, she starts accusing me to turn the temperature back up again. And I tell each time, no, at some point it got to come on to keep us from freezing. But there is this arctic chill that comes through our house. I don't like being cold and poor Nalisha, y'all. Poor Nalisha, poor Nalisha. It gets so cold, Nalisha put her boots and her coat, her scarf on her hat, and a couple of them. And her little hand on the computer type. <laughs> 
This past winter, my wife actually bought one of the pillows that's supposed to keep you cool at night. It don't work, y'all. It don't work. I promise you it don't work. Because in my sleep, what do I hear? It's hot! How long did you turn that heat up? No. Yes, you did. It's hot! Did you turn it on? How do I like being cold to you all? When, when, the atmosphere, when the temperature, though, is like my wife likes it, you all, that atmosphere in the house is one of the feeling insane. You don't understand that temperature and atmosphere are two different things, right? So when the temperature bar is how she likes it, we have an atmosphere of joy and singing in the house. Now, Malicia is shivering. I got an attitude. But my wife is walking around with no shoes and no socks and short sleeve shirt. She's smiling. And all you hear, Mother Mary's offering, this is amazing. Not how she likes it. It's a different atmosphere all together. Now. You better not say too much. I don't even ask them for dinner. I say, I'm going to take you to dinner, though. But what God does through his word, you all, what, what, what God does is he allows us through his word to help set an atmosphere for us to be able to know him, grow in him, and be free because of his word. He said, I allow you, watch this, because his word, Makita, is not just the thermostat, his word is also the thermometer. Bless your name, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Just told you. Yeah. His word is not just the thermostat, God is fire, it's also the thermometer. How many understand the thermostat sets the temperature, the thermometer takes the temperature? Yeah. And what God's word does, you always God will take your temperature, and when necessary, will set it higher, when it needs to be higher. And when it's re bring it down, okay. when you get too high for yourself, because his word creates an atmosphere you want for us to know God, grow in God, and be free because of God, and he's of his holy word. Yes. First thing we see in our text today, then you all watch this, is that hearing the word helps establish a relationship with God. Yet hearing the word helps establish what? A relationship with God. Now before we go into what happened, Shirley McBride, in John chapter 8, where we're going to spend most of our time today, I need to take you back to John chapter 7 to explain some things to you, because it's really one continuous time and one continuous event between John chapter 7 and John chapter 8. In John chapter 7, you all, we see where Jesus who is a Jew, you all, uh, and the Jews themselves have approached this timeline to turn of celebrating what's called the Feast of the Booths, B-O-O-T-H-S, Booths, or Tabernacles. The Tabernacle, Dorothy Bell, is a place of dwelling. Everybody say dwelling. dwelling. The place of dwelling. The Feast of the Booths, Tammy, was the seventh and last but yet greatest feast of the year that the Jews celebrated. They had seven major feasts every year. The Feast of the Booths took place shortly after Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement. Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, was a time of forgiveness of sin. Shortly after that, Mother Butler, they were going to the Feast of the Booth. Now the significance of the Feast of the Booth, you on the bottom, is that what God had done when he brought Israel out of Egypt, you all, and you remember, he brings them out of Egypt through the desert, across the Red Sea, glorious St. Adams, and into the wilderness for 40 years. For 40 years, they lived, you all, in the wilderness, and their clothes never run down. For 40 years, they lived in the wilderness, and their shoes never run over. For 40 years, they lived in the wilderness, and their food never runs out. Bless your name, Jesus. For 40 years, you all, they have a temporary place of dwelling. And so God says, God, he says, what I want you to do for one week every year, I want you to remember how I brought you out. Some of y'all missing this preacher just told you. Every year then, Mary, he said, I want you, I've been so good to you, I never want you to forget how good I've been in your past. Right. And shame on any one of us if we think we got it by ourselves. Shame on any one of us if we made it this far and we forget how 
good God was to help us make it this far. Somebody who understand you didn't make it this far by yourself. Slip that right hand up and say it was Jesus the whole time. or next to that house, and they would spend the better, depending that week you are, worshiping and eating in there. They could sleep if they like to, but their week was spent doing this. Now, I got to use parenthetically real quick and move on. Then in John chapter 7, though, Daphne, we see where the brothers of Jesus don't believe in his ministry. They don't believe in him or his ministry. Now, remember I told you that these of the booths, Howard, was a time to remember what God had done when Israel came out of Egypt. But also, Natasha, the Feast of the Booth was a time to anticipate the coming Messiah. And so the Jews would celebrate what God had done. They also would anticipate what God was going to do in sending the Messiah. Now, that's important, you all, because his brothers, the brothers of Jesus, they know the Feast of the Booth is happening in Jerusalem, Murders Johnson, and they tell Jesus, since you say you the Messiah, what better time to go show yourself your disciples than right now? But the Bible tells us in John 7, they only said this, Lord of Jones, because they didn't believe in him or his ministry. And they knew what would happen. They knew Jesus walked in talking about, I'm the Messiah, here I am. Y'all anticipating me, I showed up. He would be called a blasphemer. And he'd be stoned to death. His own family didn't believe in him so much, they would rather him be killed. Then, and, and then so he could shut up than to him for him to live and save somebody else. Yeah. Let me say this parenthetically, you all. I got to say this, I, I got to move on. Y'all got to get me when I say this right now. Please be careful about associating with people. I don't care who they are, whether they call your family, your family or your friends. Be careful about associating with people who encourage you to do stuff that you know and they know and get you hurt. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope your word go on this place today. Be careful about associating with people who encourage you to do things that's going to mess you up. I don't care how much somebody say they care about you. I don't care if that's your girl, that's your boy, that's your boo. I don't care. If they tell you to do something that's going to mess you up, you didn't do what Jesus did. So you can go on do you like to, but I ain't going with you. When you feel sad, they put a bottle in your hand, they don't care about you. Come on, somebody. When you want to celebrate a good time, the things get high, they don't care about you. And whether young or not so young, because sometimes we talk about sexual matters and people talk about young people, and it ain't, it ain't just ain't young people having sex. Come on, somebody. Matter of fact, I need to say something to some not so young people who still trying to get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He tell you he care about you. If the only time he call you is when his booty call time, he don't care about you. But y'all be real in this place. But we come in here, we want to hear three points in a poem and go back out there and defeat a lie. The devil is a lie. No, no. If the only time he got your number is when he wants something from you. tells us that he came on later. So now still in John chapter 7, he's teaching them, and when he does, watch this, he does this, Patricia, is he says what spirit-filled people say. He's 
speaks to them life. Somebody say life. life. He speaks life to them. Go to put that verse up, son. In John chapter 7, verse 38, Jesus says this. He that believeth in me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He, because you all, he is spirit filled. What he does, surely, Dolly, is he not only speaks life, he tells them that you can speak life also. Because that's what spirit filled people do. Spirit filled people speak life. I'm going to say that one more time. Spirit-filled people speak somebody say life. We speak life even in dead situations. We speak life. And what are we doing, y'all? Even when things need to be better, what are we doing? We're not trying to speak life. Verse 39, you what verse 39 said, but this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe in him should receive, for the Holy Ghost has not yet been given, because Jesus has not yet been glorified. So he said, in the future, what's going to happen to these sparks is out of your belly go for the life. And if you and I wonder what it is we can show other people, he told us right here in, in John chapter 7, we can go speak life in every situation. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. I gotta move on. I gotta move on. So the feast ends, Burgess Johnson. John chapter 8 opens up, says he goes up to the Mount of Olives. He spends the night up there doing whatever, praying, sleeping, whatever he was doing. He comes back down. Now, I don't need y'all to get this, because it's important really for us to understand what's happening, because since almost the end core of John chapter 6, up and through John chapter 19, the enemies of Jesus are becoming more and more bold. In John chapter 6, they come out a little bit. In John chapter 7, his own family wants him dead. In John chapter 8 now, they begin to come to him. His enemies are there when he's teaching because by the time you get to John 19, they are boldly shouting, crucify him. But here in John chapter 8, the Bible tells in the early part of this verse, you all watch this, it said this chapter that is, it tells us you all uh, that Jesus is in the temple teaching. The feast is over. He comes down with it. He's in the temple teaching. And the Pharisees and his enemies show up and they want to get him so much that they bring a woman who had been caught jacking in the act of adultery. Yeah. Now they don't care about this woman. They're trying to get Jesus. So they bring the woman. They say, now Moses and the law says such one should be stoned, but what do you say? I always say he did this bond is because they want to find a reason to accuse him. Because if Jesus says, well, forgive her, let her live, they would have turned and said, this is blasphemy. And they have a reason, not to discredit him, but to try and get him stoned. If Jesus said, well, yeah, stone her, because as the law says, they would have said, well, this man ain't no better than us. This man, y'all follow him, one of us. He in the in crowd, so y'all might as well stop following him. But there's nothing special about him or his ministry. Yet the Bible tells us, Kayan, that as they're saying this, Jesus kneels down and starts writing in the dust of the ground. And they keep pressing him, Nalisha, and pressing him, Nalisha. And he asks Nalisha as if he did not hear them. Now let me say this parenthetically, what was going on right here, Tammy? What was going on right here is they come to him with the law. They come to him ceremonially treating him like a priest. So what Jesus does, he responds how the priest will respond. Now come on place you can find this one in number chapter five, where, where, where it says what priest would do, they would take the dust car and make this what's called bitter water, and the people, the woman would drink from the bitter water, and her thigh would fall off, fall open, and say that she paralyzed, her stomach would swell, she would die, but the man had to drink it also. But then also the Bible tells us, Adams, uh, is that when someone has been accused of something, you write the accusations in the dust of the ground. If the priest takes and wipes out what's been written, that means the person is not guilty. But Jesus is writing, and he doesn't wipe it out. The people are pressing him. He looks up, Marsha Reed, and he says, He that was out sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Now, he was not just saying any sin. Because if it was any sin, people it would never be able to get stolen. So he wasn't talking about that. He was talking about this specific sin. He that didn't do the same thing y'all accused of doing, then you can do it. And he starts writing again, Rita. And what the transit believe he was doing, when they looked now, he was writing out their sins, and he wasn't erasing their sins. Wow. Watch it, this. It, 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 it's no coincidence they knew where she was at doing what she was doing when she was doing this. How do you catch her having sex and 
you knew what she was having sex at. Come on, don't y'all play with me. But don't play with me. That's why Jesus said he that was out this sin among you. Man, not only had you been adultery, but you probably did with her. Because y'all knew who would go. Y'all knew who would go, and if you knew who would do that, then, then you must have done it yourself. And, and so if you didn't go with her like that, then you can throw the first stone, and everybody had to drop this stone and walk away. Because they want to get down. Later on in this chapter, then, Pearl, Jesus is holding court, then he's come back. Because they ain't done with him yet, Howard. They still want to get him. He's teaching. Now watch this. And the Bible tells us, as he's teaching Howard about his death, people begin to believe in his life. That's why the Bible says, John chapter 8, verse number 30, it tells us right here, you are going to put John 8, 30 up there, son. It said, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Y'all got to get this. It was as Saisha, he was talking about his death. As he spake these words, there were people there, Saisha, with the enemies, but it says many people believed on him. Y'all get that right there? Many believed on him. As he's what? While he's talking about his death, people start believing in his life. Yeah, y'all misunderstood. Let me say it different, let me say it different way. If you really want to see people live, start telling them how Jesus died for them. So they got so they feel pictures. Oh God, help me get this word to your people. If you really want to see a change, start telling people that he loved them so much he died for them. See, some people only come to them, friends, say, when you share how much Jesus loved them by dying for them. You ain't got to reinvent the wheel. Just tell people, folks, that he loved you so much he died. Because as he told them he was going to die, they start believing in his life. Because that's what the word does for Lord St. Adams. When we hear the word, it helps establish a relationship with God. As they heard the word, the people wanted to believe on him. And I came to tell someone today, McKinney, that if we really want to see a change in our society, it's time to start giving the word to people. Start speaking the word over your children. Stop complaining and start speaking the word over them. Complaints are your word. When you speak the Bible, that's his word. Bless your name, Jesus. I'm going to say that one more time. Complaint and criticism is your word. But you got to speak his word. Because guess what? At your name and your word, demons ain't going to do nothing but laugh. But when you use the name and word of Jesus Christ, at his name, every knee has to go. Oh, my God. I hope somebody get this one day. At his name, every tongue must confess. And so you got to start speaking his word over those situations. Don't tell me you want something different. You put the word on it yet. Use my say the word. Use the word. Let the word do what the word does. You have the word do what it's supposed to do. See, whatever you feed is what's going to grow. So we use the word, Lord of Jones, to feed our faith. Watch this, to build us up. Watch this. Because what happens, you all, is the word of God helps make us pregnant with possibilities. We understand what is really possible, Mother Lillian Wilson, when we can speak the word to ourselves. Now, this is a spiritual principle, though, Keeper. It's a spiritual principle. Watch this. Because whatever we speak is what we believe what grows inside of us. So if you keep telling yourself what you can't do, you're not going to do it. Thank you, somebody. If you keep telling yourself what's too hard for you to do, it's going to be too hard for you to do. Because whatever you speak, you're going to feed. Whatever you feed is going to grow. So if you want to see the thing turn around, stop telling yourself what you can't do. And so I confess with the words I can do all things. Bless your name, Jesus. I can do some of everything through Christ. Who, somebody say, strengthen me, Lord. He can do all things so you can grow. So the word of God tells in Romans chapter 10, verse number, number 17, you all, that faith comes by hearing and hearing what? The word of God. We got to hear that I am Jesus. And that verse, Juju, it, it means, watch this, that suffix means it's continual. It's not just one time. It's not just a couple of times. We got to keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. As he was speaking, people believed on him. We got to keep hearing what he's saying to us, Carl. And we hearing what he's saying to us, God, our faith is built up, and I 